Hello everybody, my name is Caleb and you're watching Live For Love TV. Like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Welcome back to Live For Love TV. Today is the 10th day, the third month, 22nd year inside the 21st century. I hope everyone's doing well out there. Well, you're going to have to listen to me today. You're not going to actually get a chance to see me. You're just going to see the ceiling while I look up towards it in my meditated state. Today I'm going to uh, share a little bit of something that happened to me about two years ago or just under two years ago and, and really did change my perspective quite a bit. I mean, not completely because we have so many different little points through life that, you know, makes people's perspectives change from time to time. But this one had a significant, um, I'd say a significant change on my perspective in life. So I'll start it exactly as I can remember it. I'm getting my hair done two years ago, um, a lady is using a very natural um, gel, or was it gel? No, just hair oil, sorry. The natural hair oil while she's doing my hair. I'm not thinking anything of it, it's, it's completely all natural, so it's all good. She does my hair and then she leaves. Five, literally five minutes later, without thinking of anything, I jump on a treadmill and I start running on the treadmill. Now about 15 minutes into, into running on the treadmill, I start feeling a burning in my eyes. Now, obviously anybody who does a lot of training knows that when salt gets in your eyes, it feels a little bit, a little bit burning. So I didn't really notice anything at the time, but normally when salt gets in your eyes, it lasts a little while and then, you know, a few minutes and then it starts to ease as, as you know, your eyes as you get washed. It wasn't easing. And I was, feeling, I was feeling this pain in my eyes. And I haven't connected the hair gel with my eyes burning me. It just didn't connect. I hadn't computed it. But anyway, I get off the treadmill. I sit down for a while. My eyes are still burning me. I now start to realize something is not right. My eyes feel bad. So I go to the shower and I start washing my eyes out as best I can. As I look in the mirror, the first thing I notice is that my eyes are red. You know, that kind of red when you go, you go into chloroform swimming pools, you know, with chlorinated swimming pools, or bleached out swimming pools. You know, your eyes are quite red when you, when you swim for an hour or so in that. So it felt a bit like that, you know. And um, I thought, okay, I've washed out my eyes as best I can, and I'll go and sit down. But within less than five minutes, I started looking around the room and it was if and this is the way i can only way i can describe it to someone who's got good vision it was as if i was looking at the room through a fog i could see things but it was very cloudy very very cloudy like a, a serious white mist had come through the room now i knew that wasn't right and then i looked towards the light bulb now when i tried to look towards the light bulb my eyes hurt me but what was even more significant than that was when I look at the light bulb, I'm not seeing a bulb, I'm just seeing a blinding white light that you can't see the shape of the bulb, it just looks white all in front of your eyes, so you have to turn away. Now I'm starting to worry now because I know something ain't right. Something is really not right. I tried to play it down a little bit and think, this may, maybe, you know, I'll, just, uh, I'll, I'll wash out my eyes again and I'll go to bed and in the morning I'll be okay. Silly move, I know, but it was it was in, it was late in an evening, and I wasn't close to any any medical um, people that I knew. Anyway, I went to bed. I slept. I didn't, I, you know, I did actually get sleep, and it wasn't burning me anymore. The next morning when I woke up, now when I woke up and I turned on the light, I had to turn the light straight off. The line, the light was blinding me. When I looked around the room, I can remember, I can remember clearly thinking, this white mist is so thick and strong now that I'm seeing shapes, but I'm not really seeing things properly. So the first thing I do is I go towards the mirror to look at my eyes. Now, when I've gone to the mirror, I've now hit shock because I cannot see my eyes. I can see the shape of my head, 
I know there's a face there, a person there, but I can't make out anything. I can't make out nose, mouth, eyes, anything. Just a, sh a, a sort of round shape of a head. Now I know I'm in real trouble. I don't know what to do. I called a friend, explained what's happened to me, what I'm seeing. They call somebody who says I need to get down to the, um, the doctors as soon as possible. Um, so I do. I do my best to get to a doctor's. I'm taken by the hand to a doctor's because I couldn't go there by myself. I really couldn't make out hardly anything. And lights, you know, lights, car lights, whatever, lights in shops, whatever, they were blinding. And I was also, my eye was streaming with water. I was feeling, every time I f um, blinked, my eyes pained me. I don't know what that was about, but I was in real pain with every single blink and water was streaming down my eyes. So I don't know what's happening. I go to a kind of eye doctor. I'm taken to an eye. Actually, let me, let's, let, let's get this completely right. I go to a doctor and I'm sitting in the doctor's surgery. And it's so dark in, the, in there because of my eyes. I can't see anybody in the surgery. I'm only five yards away from people and I can't see them. I can see that there's someone there, but I could not see that person. That person could have been my mum. I wouldn't have known them. I could not see them. So I'm sitting there wondering. Then my friend goes over and says, OK, there's an eye doctor next door. Let's go into the eye doctor. So I go into the eye doctor. The eye doctor has a chart on the wall, you know, these same charts where you get in opticians. She says to me, "What? Of the, which one of the um, characters on the thing, what line can you see? And I look towards the wall, I can't even see the chart, let alone a single character. I didn't even know there was a chart on the wall. Couldn't see it. So then she goes and she realizes, obviously I've got big problems. So she looks into my eye with the, with the, with the uh, tools that she has and makes, you know, makes me look, puts my chin on something and then she's looking deep into my eyes and stuff like that. She said to me, and I, and I, and I don't want to get this wrong, she said to me, you have burnt the corneas off your eyes somehow. And I thought, what is, I don't, I, I didn't know what the cornea was at the time. So I knew about the iris, I've heard of the retina, but I wasn't sure of the cornea. She said to me at the time, she's going to have to send me somewhere else to a, 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 a more, a higher grade specialist, basically, to see what they can do. She said, don't worry, we'll get your sight back. Now, I, 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 I walked out of there without ever seeing that woman's face. I don't know what she looks like. All I know was I could just about make out that she, she was fair-skinned, a fair-skinned black lady, but I could not make her out at all. And when she said you were going to be all right, I didn't believe a word she said. I thought she's just saying this. She can tell I'm worried and, um, you know, she's just trying to make me feel good. So I go to a specialist. Now, when I walk in, to the room of the specialist now. I'm really looking around to see what I can see. I can't see anything on the walls. I can't recognize. Everything's just a blur, become even more of a blur than it was. The white mist is still there, but now everything's completely a blur. Before getting into that actual specialist office, I literally couldn't come down a step. Uh, you know, I couldn't come off a curb because I couldn't see the curb. So I literally had to be held by the hand and walked and told where to step and where not to step. Pretty frightening to me, you know, somebody who's had their eyesight, pretty decent eyesight all their life. So anyway, I went into the specialist, the specialist looked at my eyes, so told me the same thing the other lady had said to me, and said that your corneas have been burnt off. Now she needed to know what the, the, the lady had used. And I was able to call the lady uh, and, um, talked to her who had used who'd done my hair she gave her a, a whatsapp to of the of the chem, of the stuff that she used and it was completely natural so the, the the eye specialist said to me basically you must be allergic to something in there even though this stuff is all pretty natural she can't see anything in there that should have done that to me so she looks again into my eyes and says listen your corneas are burnt off but there's a, the, the bottom part of your cornea, if there's no burnt off part there, right at the bottom of it, 
then it can regenerate. Now, that's, that's, you know, that's music to my ears. And I, I did believe her because, I mean, that would have been a hell of a story. And she looked at it and said, it, my, the, the bottom of my corneas were not burnt off, the, the bottom part of it, just the cornea itself. She said, the reason why my, my eyes are streaming is because it's burnt off. There's actually like no, no film over my eyes, no covering. So I'm, my actual eyelid is, is literally touching my eye without what me and you don't realise is that we have a, a kind of film in front of it and that's what's bur being burnt off. Anyway, what she did was she gave me some medication, antibiotics, she gave me some cream, some eye gel, things I have to use a few, every few hours and um, basically try and stay away from light. She gave me a, a four or five days treatment and said I should come back. I left the office still in, 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 in with, with a, a distressed state, I have to be honest with you, because I, 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 you know, I, at that time, you, your mind runs all over the place. You think to yourself, well, I'm not going to see anybody again. You know, I'm never going to be able to see the people I know and the people I, I was expected to see on a daily basis. It was a, it was a, a kind of alarming, <laughs> if, if that's the right word. So I leave out, I go back to the house, and um, I've got the, this the ointment, I'm using it. Cut to a long story short, at 24 hours, the next day, I'm still having problems seeing, but the, the white mist is not as pronounced. The bright light is there, but not as pronounced. So I now, I now have hope. I now have that feeling that something is happening because I've come, I've come to a point where I still can't see my face in a mirror properly, meaning that I can see that my shape of my head is there, but I can't see my eyes, nose or face. But the mist is gone. The mist, the blur is there. The blur is there, but the mist is gone. So I continue to take the medication for the next few days. And every day, it looked, I was just a little bit better, just a little bit better. Though my eyes were still paining me because of the film had been come off. So five days later, I go back this time she, she, she puts me towards the, the eye chart on the wall. I can actually see an eye chart. Now I'm not seeing very well, but I know there's a chart there and I can see some, some characters, the big ones especially. So I know I'm doing better. She knows I'm doing better. She says this could take a few weeks, but I have to keep, keep going on with the medication. But cut a long story short, about, I'd say two weeks, 14 days, 15 days, my eyesight was pretty good. Now, I'm not saying it was 100% back to where it was at that time, before the, before the accident, but it was pretty good. I could see myself. I could see people around me. I could, I could operate by myself. I could go where I wanted to go. I was, I, I was pretty good. And, and, um, and I, I felt good now, and I knew I was really, really on the mend. The reason I'm telling you this story is because one of my videos, I talked about living in that loving state and loving people and having that love for people and knowing that love is a state. In between losing my sight, complete, I'd say as good as completely, to the point where I could see things again, maybe after a few days to a week, to where it really came back. I remember saying to myself, as, as my eyes started to clear up, I'm saying to myself, anything I see is beautiful. Because when you're in that state that you can't see anything and you can't make anything out, you don't have that concept in your mind running around like how you probably do right now. You know, oh, he's fat, she's this, he looks awful, I don't like the look at that, I don't like the look at that. Everything, you, you know, all these silly things that we come out with our, in our consciousness of what you like the look of and what you don't like the look of. I remember coming through and saying to myself, my God, if I can see again, I ain't going to never say anybody looks bad. No matter what they look like, I don't care, they've got the, you know, the mini skirt of all mini skirts. If they're, if, if they're a beast, they're not going to look bad. Everything that I can see will look good to my eyes. I remember saying that, and I, and I focus on that constantly, even to this day. Now, obviously, like anybody else, when you see something, instantly your, a thought may come to your mind and say, but I, I check that thought. I don't let it just flow through me and say, oh, look at that, look at that person, look at the state of them, or look at that, That's not, that doesn't look good. When that thought comes to me, I instantly click it and say, I'm glad I can see that. I really am glad I can see that. And that's why I said to you that the mind can play some tricks on us into the point where we think there are things that we don't like. 
but sometimes it's just that we, you know, a bored mind does all kind of silly things. But when really push really comes to shove, if you if you're in the state I was in and you're coming out of that state, there's nothing that you can see with your eye that you will not like. Take care, Live for Love TV. Like, share, and subscribe. Live for Love TV. Oh. Like, share, subscribe. Live for Love TV. Awesome.